Good morning, Dale. Good morning. <laughs> Carl's not been yet, so we're not going to get maximum performance. Not maximum performance. No, max so what we'll do is when Carl arrives, we'll have a little commercial break. <laughs> That's the one. And then we'll come back and talk about this car. Cool. Let's go about feelings as well, if not. Before. Right. I'm making you nervous. <laughs> That's a yeah. first. <laughs> Who have we got in the bay today, Mr. Dale? Dave. We got Dave the trimmer in with his freshly painted and freshly trimmed caddy. So we're going to be talking about how to refine the paint after it's been through the body shop and then protect it as well because it's had enough time painted in February. Yeah, got out of paint in February. So that's a good amount of time for the paint to fully cure and degas, which means we put a sealant on there now and protect it. Nice one. So today's day in the bay will be focusing on how to protect and care for your new paint. Good job. So we're going to do our, our usual regime that people always see on the day in the bay. So we're going to be going through the waterless system. So we're going to be using the waterless uh, wash and wax anywhere. And then we're going to be using the waterless wheel and tire as well. So we're going to get the car prepped. Um, we're going to have a feel, um, see if it needs clay barring. Then we're going to go through some new products that have just come over from America for us to play with. So everyone knows our traditional uh, 105 and 205. This is an advance on them. So it's the 110 and the 210. The good thing is, these have got longer buffing cycles, so you can work the product for longer on the surface. Especially with a 210, we could probably get a bit more refinement out of that. So we're going to have a look, because it has been in the body shop. You know, it has been rotary polished. There is a bit of marring on the paint. So we're probably going to skip the one of where the 110 and go to the 210 and go for more of a refinement stage on it. But before all that, we're going to get it clean. So we've washed the car down, we've clayed it as well. There wasn't really much of it that needed clean. There was a bit of overspray on the roof, so we've addressed that. Um, so we're just looking now at the paint. It's been it's been machine polished. It's been kind of cut back and polished um, using a rotary. But we can see that the color's not exactly as, as clear as we want it to be. We want to bring that clarity for on the reflection. So I'm going to go to our yellow polishing pad and our Ultra Pro finishing polish. We don't want to overly cut the paint because it's already been cut. Now we want to back off on that and enhance the gloss that's there. So for us to just keep churning at it with a cutting compound and a cutting pad is not gonna do it any favors. We wanna refine that and kind of back off and give it some gloss. So normally, when I'm doing kind of like detailing paint correction, mm -hmm. I'd use a microfiber pad. Mm -hmm. And solid because these cut quicker, but also because they're foam backing, they stay cool. But because this is single stage, the paint clogs up the fibers mm -hmm. and it's harder to clean out. Mm -hmm. With a foam, because it's got the open pores, that can be hoovered out yeah. after each pan. That's why sometimes choosing the, the right the pad for the right yeah. paint. Spread product like normal. Go to swell and defect removal, which is my go-to kind of five eight to four eight. Yeah. And because it's a it's a it's more of a polishing compound than a kind of cutting compound. We can work a bigger surface area. If I was just using a regular kind of cutting compound, I'd probably reduce it to that. But because, because it's a slicker product, we can work it a bit more. So if you stand right in the middle now, see how cloudy that looks in comparison. But like I say, all we're doing is taking that gray haze that's on the yeah. surface of the paint. You can really see it on that, can't you? Yeah, and it's bringing out the color. Yeah. Because what, what the hazing does is it's scratched paint, so it's gonna make it gray. Yeah. And that's why you just get that dulling of the color. Um, sure. But now we're just gonna get, give it some body. And um, like I said, we don't want to overwork the surface. So now we've done that, we'll probably leave that now and then wait until we get to the, the waxing stage. Mm -hmm. So now Dave's gonna have a go. Um, the pad's already been primed, so you don't need to load it with product again. All you need to do is top it up with the amount of product you want per section. So we're talking about the size of like your average garden peas, really. That's it. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah. just find a point where you're comfortable with it. If you're going to hold it there, I'd go round the side of it like that. Nick. Right. right. Just keep that like that. Yeah. Take your hand down the side here. <laughs> and cut the front. You don't have oh, to play that. No, don't have to do that. Just Mr. Dare, touch me. That hand is the balance, yeah. so that's making sure that pad is flat. So you know right. you mentioned earlier there was like hazing lines in it, mm -hmm. stuff like that, because someone had it on a on an edge. This hand is the guide, just telling the machine where to go. Okay. Use the, the weight, the machine only, mm -hmm. and then use these lines on the backing plate to see if it's spinning okay. okay. You'll notice if you make small adjustments with the back hand, it will kind of free it up and spin it easier. Right. So it's just getting comfortable with the machine. Okie dokie. Let's look it up. We've got Dave up and running um, with the machine puller. We just wanted to show you something that maybe you've got a vehicle like this you can watch out for. So Dave's had these sign writing hand painted on the car. So um, what you want to do is essentially avoid it. So if you've got a smaller head for the machine, you can do around these areas. But I'd, I'd advise never really going over these unless they're clear coated into the paint. Right, one way, buff the other. I think my side looks better than yours. That's cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, we're gonna be using the gold class wax. That was pretty darn smooth. <laughs> that was very smooth. So we've got two kinds of wax. We've got yeah. um, synthetic waxes, yeah. which I use for dark metallic cars, and we've got canoeba waxes, um, which I tend to use on kind of more retro kind of colors, like your solid pastels, stuff like that, stuff that hasn't got metallic in it. The reason is it's naturally toffee coloured or kind of browny yellowish which means instead of giving this a wet look that dark cars get you want to give it a warm depth which means that the canoe will kind of feed into that paint and just give it a real brightness because when people come up and say you know I want your best wax for my car the first question we always ask is what colours your car because our best wax isn't necessarily your best wax and um, there's no point sending someone the wrong wax for the wrong colour car so it's always good like synthetics, darks and metallics, canoebas, light colours. Get the pad, pinch the top of the pad, put it on the wax, it's half a turn, that's enough now to do the whole bonnet, possibly the wings. Wow. Yeah, so people tend to use a lot of wax and it becomes a chore to take off, um, where it should be the easiest part. You really want to back off from the paint and be quite nice to it, essentially. So you know how we've primed the pad, we've primed the surface, we're going to do the same with the wax. I'm just going to draw three lines across the bonnet. And then over these lines, it's going to do one pass. A little bit, just an amount of pressure to keep the pad flat, but that's it, that's all you need to do. Now we've enhanced the glass, we want to protect it. So we do the finger swipe test, and we can see that that's nice and cure now. Yeah. Nice and cured. So again, we're going to do exactly what we've been doing every step of the way. Wipe one way. So on the, some of the small areas and a bit more sensitive areas that are around trim and obviously the sign writing we've used the French pad. These actually give a quicker cut. Because it's a smaller pad, it will actually cu cut the paint quicker. Um, so we reduce the speed on the machine and kind of increase our arm movements on that. Um, but Dave's done the kind of bigger sections um, using what he learned on the bonnet. So now we've got the whole car kind of refined. We're now gonna move on to protecting the whole car with wax and then giving it a final detail and then we're done. So we've waxed the car now, so we've refined it using the 210 and then we've protected that using the gold class wax which is perfect for these kind of colours and the kind of more old fashioned kind of solid base coat uh, kind of gloss colours. 
Now we're going to give it the final touch. So I'm going to get Dave to go around with a mirror bright detailer. I'm going to get him to haze the whole car and this will settle on a kind of wax residues that are still on there. And we're just going to wipe down to give it that real glossy final finish. And then I'm going to do the glass just to, as a final touch and then send Dave on his way. another day in the bay done um, just to recap what we've done and why we've done it we clean the car using our wash and wax anywhere we clean the wheels and tires using our waterless wheel and tire cleaner so we used our body shop ultra pro finishing polish so because this come fresh from the paint booth um, we wanted to use something that's going to refine the paint without taking too much off it so it's still got a little bit of cut on there but it's high in polishing oils to give it a real glossy finish as you can see it's not like our regular consumer products this is from the pro range and um, so it's body shop safe and then we used our canuva base wax to give it a real brightness and depth of gloss then finished it using the mirror bright detailer to remove any kind of excess residues from the from the wax and to give it a, an outstanding shine so that's it for day in the bay i was done oh.